What is going on guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about Ripple because Ripple has really skyrocketed, it is on everybody's mind, it has surpassed Ethereum as number two cryptocurrency when it comes to market cap and we are going to talk about what happened and why we saw this amazing growth. And so before we start I want to remind you that if you go to academy.ivanontech.com you can buy my online course on pre-sale before February the 1st and get 50% off, actually more than 50% off and this course will guide you by the hand when it comes to fundamentals in blockchain technology. You will understand all about blockchain, all about Bitcoin, Ethereum, consensus algorithms, mining and so on. So please check out academy.ivanontech.com and that being said guys, let's get into the video. So the recent increase in price is most likely due to the news from Japan and South Korea. Namely that uh, Ripple has onboarded banks from those countries to use Ripple infrastructure to do payments. And international bank payments, international bank transfers is where Ripple has its biggest use case. So for example, if I want to send some money from Sweden to Norway, my Swedish bank would need to have a Nostra account in the Norwegian bank. And the Norwegian bank would need to have uh, a Nostra account in my Swedish bank, meaning that my bank has some money in the Norwegian bank and the Norwegian bank has some money in my bank. So when I do a transfer from Sweden to Norway, when I do an international transfer, my Swedish bank would debit the Norwegian bank account, the Nostra account of the Norwegian bank, and the Norwegian bank would credit the Nostra account of my Swedish bank and then my friend would receive the funds. And as you can see it is extremely extremely complicated structure we have here that if I want to do business I need to have a Nostra account and in many cases there are no direct Nostra accounts with all the banks. Of course your bank cannot have money in all the banks, in all other banks in the world. So instead we do some kind of routing. We have many intermediaries, maybe, uh, maybe I don't have a Nostra account in the Norwegian bank but my bank has an account in a Finnish bank so instead we would have this bank in Finland as an intermediary and um, then this Finnish bank would have to have a Nostra account in the Norwegian bank. So as you can see it is extremely complicated, it is why it takes several days to clear an international transaction and uh, this is the problem Ripple is trying to solve in this space of banking. There is another problem with this current system that the banks are facing, namely counterparty risk. So let's go back to the example where my Swedish bank had some funds in the Norwegian bank. Uh, this means that there's some kind of trust here for example, let's imagine for a second that uh, Norway runs out of oil and uh, the whole economy crashes and suddenly this Norwegian bank goes bankrupt. What does it mean? Well, it means that the money that my Swedish bank had in that Norwegian bank account is lost. So as you can see, there is a risk involved and uh, this example is only a joke, I'm sure. Your oil will be there for many years and then you can just switch to fish if you run out of oil, dear Norwegians. So Ripple solve several problems for banks. Number one, the time it takes to move money and number two, counterparty risk. So how would Ripple solve this? First of all, when we're talking about Ripple, we have to keep in mind that Ripple means several things. Ripple is a corporation, the company behind the technology that is really pushing and selling this technology. Then we have Ripple the protocol, the payment protocol, and then we have XRP digital asset, the cryptocurrency you see traded. So how would this situation with international payments change if banks would use Ripple instead? Well, Ripple described themselves as a global exchange for anything of value, meaning that my Swedish bank would be able to use this global exchange in order to send money to Norway directly. And to do that, we would have to use XRP to pay the, tra the transaction fee. And so the fees are used in this exchange in order to prevent spam. So when you do a transaction on this exchange, for example from Swedish crowns to Norwegian crowns, uh, the transaction fee would just disappear. It would not go to the Ripple Corporation, it would just vanish. So this is just a spam prevention mechanism and this uh, 
a fee has to be paid in XRP. And so this is where value of the XRP token comes from. Uh, and so this is not only between currencies. Ripple claim that it can be used for anything of value. So for example, if you have uh, your uh, bonus from your loyalty points from your grocery shop, you should be able to uh, convert it from your grocery points to Bitcoin, for example, using this exchange. As you can see, it's important to understand what we're really talking about when we say the word Ripple, because Ripple is a company. It is this technology for exchanging value, uh, the protocol, and it is also a cryptocurrency, this XRP uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, sometimes people say, I just invested in Ripple. Well, you invested in the XRP cryptocurrency that is used as an native token in this uh, uh, exchange protocol, in the Ripple protocol. Another thing we have to keep in mind is that Ripple was created for a reason. It was created to build out the infrastructure for the banking sector, while Bitcoin and Litecoin and other cryptocurrencies were created just for the sake of digital cash. So it is a clear difference when it comes to the use case. Another important thing to realize is that the Ripple Corporation have a lot of XRP tokens. And this is, in my understanding, how they intend on uh, profiting from this technology, from their work. Because as you remember, the transaction fees do not go to them. But if the XRP token goes up in value, they will of course profit. And uh, they will also use their XRP in order to onboard new banks and new players onto the network. Something else that uh, we have to mention is that the Ripple Corporation themselves do not control the protocol. The protocol is uh, on the network. I mean people are running this Ripple protocol so there is no way for the Ripple Corporation to force everyone to upgrade or to force everyone to change the protocol. Uh, much like in Bitcoin, the Bitcoin developers, for example Bitcoin Core, they cannot force everyone to upgrade to their left latest software. So uh, this is something we really have to keep in mind. That being said, of course there is a clear ideological difference between cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, such as Ethereum, Litecoin and uh, Ripple. Because uh, with Bitcoin, with Litecoin, this community is really pushing for a fundamental change in how finance works. That uh, we shouldn't even need institutions in order to do transactions overseas. Uh, why is it even needed when I can just use Bitcoin in order to transact uh, all over the world or Litecoin or IOTA or wherever. So I think it's important to realize what Ripple is made for. It is made for the traditional banking system in order to make it more efficient and not to confuse it with Bitcoin or Litecoin or other cryptocurrencies we normally talk about. And uh, banks will of course try to make their infrastructure a lot smoother, a lot faster, because they see the growth of cryptocurrencies, they see the problems they have, that it takes forever to transact overseas, it is slow, it is inefficient, and so on and so forth. And of course they will invest in technologies that solve this issue. And Ripple is such a technology. Because what is a banking day even? Why, why aren't banks open 24-7? We're living in a global world. Why should I wait uh, when the, until the weekend ends before I can send my money? For example, now we'll have New Year. It will be several days where you cannot do anything financially, which is of course a pain. And I think this pain will be solved when it comes to the traditional banking space with technologies such as Ripple. So guys, I hope you understand what Ripple is. I hope you have more insight what it will be used for. And I hope you also have a more overview of the ideology of the use case. That being said, guys, please smash the bell button so that you're always up to date. And if you're a new viewer, you should definitely subscribe to the channel because you will find this channel interesting. I myself am a software developer and I'll see you guys next time.